Hello again, I'm Ian Hinchliffe, a physicist at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. And uh, earlier this week, uh, we, we posted a video on this site uh, inviting you to send questions that you might have after hearing the announcements of the new results from CERN, which happened on the 4th of July. Several of you have asked about the possible future implications of a Higgs boson, if indeed that's what has been discovered. This is a very difficult question to ask. You're asking what might be the impacts on other science or what might be the impacts on society as a whole. It's not really possible to answer it. So let's go back and, and think about how somebody historically might have attempted to answer this question. So in the 19th century, physicists were doing research on electromagnetism. And towards the beginning of the 20th century, J.J. Thomson discovered the electron, uh, at which point he described it was useless. So he got that wrong because, of course, we now know that the electron is responsible for understanding semiconductivity, radio, everything else. Earlier in the 19th century, when uh, Faraday was doing chemical experiments, he was asked also how useful they were. And he quoted Benjamin Franklin, who responded by saying, uh, what use is an infant? So the summary of my answer to your question is I don't know. And I don't believe anybody else knows either. Another frequently asked question relates to the role of the Higgs in generating mass, both for itself and for other particles. People have asked, for example, how the Higgs can make a, a particle be heavier than itself. So it's useful to draw a distinction between the Higgs particle and the Higgs field. Let's start with the latter. So the Higgs field interacts with particles in the standard model. And the stronger such a particle interacts, the larger its mass. So, for example, an electron, which interacts rather weakly, has a small mass, where the top, whereas the top quark, which interacts very strongly, has a very large mass, indeed a mass bigger than the Higgs boson itself, if this new resonance is the Higgs boson. And a fo the photon, which doesn't interact at all with the Higgs field, has no mass. Now, to think about where the Higgs generates its own mass, it's a self-interaction. But to think of it's an excitation of the Higgs field, if you like. So one way to think about that is think of a pond of water, which we might represent the Higgs field. If I throw a rock into that pond, then a wave will develop. Uh, and there's energy in that wave. And you can think of that, that excitation, that wave, as being the analogous thing to the Higgs boson. Tom has asked from Facebook, and I'm reading his question here, if there's any chance that the Higgs field could some day go the way of the ether with a modern Michael Samoli experiment disproving its existence. Of course, that's entirely possible. Wouldn't be a Michael Samoli experiment, but something similar. And in fact, one might even say it's even likely. If we go back, and I'll use gravitation here as an example, we had a classical theory of gravity, Newtonian gravity, which ex accurately explained all measurements, all gravitational phenomena for a very long period of time. Then along came Einsteinian gravity, or general relativity, which made some predictions which in detail were different than those made by Newtonian gravity. And for example, if you want to describe the detailed motions of the planet Mercury, you have to use general relativity, not a Newtonian gravity, as it doesn't provide a complete explanation. So if we come back to the Higgs boson, it, we're going to do many more measurements of the Higgs boson properties over the next few years. And it's when we make those measurements, we may uncover details that can't be explained by the standard model. There might be more than one Higgs boson, for example. So when we make those measurements, we may have to modify the standard model or possibly even throw it out. This has been a really exciting week in science. We've discovered a new particle and, and a, almost a unique particle in the sense that we, we know it's a boson. We don't know that it's a Higgs yet, but it could be the Higgs. It's I, well, ha whatever happens, well, the physics won't be the same again. And over the next couple of years, we will be doing many more detailed measurements, and we will see how it fits in, whether the standard model is really right or it needs to be extended. Stay tuned for more developments. <laughs>